Have you heard of the Can You Hide game? We've all heard of Bloody Mary, Charlie Charlie, and those games are scary, but they're nothing compared to the Can You Hide game. It's not something you can find on the App Store or the Google Play Store. There's nothing about the game on any public websites except this cautionary post. It doesn't matter if you're a good or a bad person, it chooses its targets randomly. No matter how hard you try, you can't avoid the game. Nobody can. First, you're gonna hear a ding on your phone. And then a window might pop up. All it will say is, can you hide? Yes or no? Make sure you pick no. When it first appeared on my phone screen, I was shocked. I thought it was like some sort of virus. And there's no option to close the window. There's only yes and no. I didn't want to infect my phone, so I decided to do some research first. I tried to Google it, but I couldn't find anything about the yes, no game. The only thing I could find is one thread that pointed me toward a Discord server. There was an entire category for this new game that started appearing on people's phones. Clicking yes apparently starts a hide and seek game with the unknown. When I read that, I was like, I don't know what this means. So I kept reading. The first person on the thread said, can anybody help me? Nobody seems to know anything about this game. My friend played it nonstop for a week and then he went missing. That was two weeks ago. There are daily search parties, but I don't think they're gonna find him. He told me it wasn't a game. He said he saw a face outside of his window. Some people said you have to select no. Other people said it destroyed their life. Some people said the only way is to not choose anything. Just leave it on your phone forever. Someone said, what if I just turn off my phone? The last comment on the thread, it's your funeral. Just choose yes or no, it's not that hard. I had finally decided what I was going to do. I turned my phone off and I took it a step further. I reset my phone to the factory settings. But when the weekend was over and I met up with my friends, I found out my friend Corey had been playing the Can You Hide game. I was about to tell him that he was supposed to choose no when he threw down his phone. It was already open to the game window. Apparently he'd been playing it all week. On the phone screen, there was a map with a little green marker indicating his location. Then there was a little red marker that was slowly getting closer to us. Every day, once a day from two to four in the afternoon, Corey had to hide. It tracks your location, so you have to keep moving. I checked my watch. It was 10 minutes to four, but Corey wasn't hiding. He was in the park with me. And the red marker also just arrived at the park. It had found Corey and my gut told me something very bad was about to happen. Then Corey jumped up and screamed. That's a wrap, four o'clock again, I bested the game. But when he checked the map, it was only a hundred feet away from him. I checked his phone. It read, you avoided the creaker by 121 yards. Then I heard something that terrified me. There was a creak. I looked up from the table and looked around. Corey didn't even seem to notice the sound. I checked Corey's phone again, this time looking for the red dot on the map. It was in the forest about 100 feet away from us to the left. So I looked over there. Peering around the bark of the tree was one of the scariest things I've ever seen in my entire life. There was some thing looking directly at us. It was not human. It was as short as a toddler and its head, if it had a head, was wearing this peach colored rubber mask. Almost the tone of human flesh, but not quite. But worst of all, it was smiling at me. I told Corey, it looks like someone is actually seeking you. I pointed at the tree. I don't think you should play that game anymore. He looked over and didn't see anything and told me that my phasmophobia was really killing his mood. And I mean, I do have a proclivity for trembling at everyday sights and sounds. In my mind, there's always been a ghost or ghoul around the corner. Ever since my parents passed, I had been that way. But I knew I had saw that thing behind the tree. But since I have phasmophobia, it makes it very difficult for people to believe me when I think I see or hear something. My friends told me to go home and just get some rest. At this point, I was starting to think maybe I am going crazy. Maybe I'm on the verge of a psychotic break. The next day around half six in the evening on my drive home from work, Tanya called me. She was one of my friends that was in the park the day before. I said, I'm driving, what's up? And then I realized she was bawling on the other end of the phone. It's in the house, she whispered. The game started playing, it's earlier than usual. I said, slow down, what's happening? She said the game started at six. And I think you were right. I think someone's actually seeking us. We saw a horrible face in the window and there were creaking sounds in the house. We were hiding in the attic. I asked her if she had called the police and she said they were on their way. It would be about 15 minutes. Then Corey told her they needed to be quiet. And then on the other side of the phone, I heard a creak. 
It sounded so close that I turned around to make sure that nightmarish demon wasn't in my car. At that point, I decided not to go home and to go check on them. I was only eight minutes away from Corey's house, closer than the police, but not by much. I was still on the phone with them and I heard Tanya whisper, how did it even get in here? I didn't see the door open. Then Corey goes, he's not an id, he's just a child and he needs to leave our- He didn't get to finish his sentence because Tanya interrupted him screaming, what is that? Corey started to beg. The screams of my two friends were deafening. I was so fixated on reaching the house that I didn't hang up the call. It was only as I pulled into Corey's driveway that I realized I had been listening to the sounds of squelching, snapping, and the most haunting of all, creaking. I barged in the front door and ran all the way up to the attic. I expected to find some sickening scene, but the space was empty and Corey and Tanya were gone. The police questioned me when they arrived, but my alibi was airtight. The call to the police was made before I had even left my office and traffic camera footage put me too far from the scene of the crime during the call. The final verdict? Missing persons.